This is pretty simple. It starts so simple and it will progressively get more tricky. By the way, each of these features, to show you how they work, I will pull out different functions to show you. Um, because, for example, as you'll notice, um, this graph, well, graphs, for example, can only have a horizontal or an oblique asymptote. You can't have both, and you'll see why shortly. Okay, so I'm going to give you a whole bunch of examples so that you see the different features and how, how you identify them. Okay? So, to begin with, symmetry. Have a look at this function, y equals x plus 1 on x. Does it have any kind of symmetry? It's awesome. mm, any takers? What do you think? Yeah, what do you reckon? I think it's odd. You think it's odd. Why might we think that it's odd? Okay, so remember what the definitions of odd and even functions are, which are like this. So here's even symmetry. Even is if you put in a negative value, right? It doesn't matter. What you get back is the same as if you put in a uh, uh, positive value. Okay? So x squared, that's a typical even function. right? An odd function is almost identical, except when you put in the negative value, what do you get at the other end? Yeah, you're going to get the flipped over version of that. Okay? So the easiest way to test this out is to say, well, OK, if I put in, if I define this in this way, right, using function notation, okay, what happens when I put in a, a negative? Okay? Like so. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a negative x. Okay? What am I going to get? I'm going to get minus x plus 1 on minus x. Does that make sense? Now, what I'm looking for is either one of these. I'm looking for either one of these happening. Okay? In order to see whether the first one happens, it's like, is this exactly the same as this? And the answer is no, no so it's not even. Okay. Now, is this equal to negative of that? Right? And just to make it super obvious, I'm going to take out that negative as a factor. Right? So you're going to get x plus 1 on x. So it's odd. See that? That's minus f of x. Another way that you could see it is um, this idea of putting things in one fraction is very, very important. So, and it's helpful as well. Good morning. If I were to combine these two components into one fraction, right, what would I get on the numerator? I'd have x squared plus 1 on x. Okay? When you're looking for odd or even symmetry, you need to pay, because all of these things are algebraic, you need to pay close attention to the powers and where you get odd or even powers. Did that get alluded to on Friday? Yeah, okay. So you can see up here, right? When you put your negative x in there, right, because it's squared, what happens to that negative? <coughs> it becomes um, disregarded, basically, okay, because you square it out so the negative disappears. Then you just get that negative on the bottom, right? So when you put it in this form, I think it's kind of more obvious that what you're going to get is an odd function, okay? The sign disappears from out here and then you get it down here. So of course you're going to get negative f of x. Okay, so. So far, so good. We've identified a form of symmetry. So it's an odd function. So as I start to um, put this in here, okay, everything that I now get, I'm just going to do one half of the graph. Okay? And once I do one half, I will get everything on the left-hand side, okay? or, or vice versa. Factorize. Have a look at it. Is it factorized? There it is there. It's in one fraction. Yeah, as I put it in one fraction, that's it. There's, there's nothing you can do to that. There's no way you can factorize x squared plus 1. You could factorize the difference of squares, but you cannot factorize the sum of squares. So because this is a very simple one, I'm done there. Now let's have a look at these. Asymptotes. OK, we start with vertical ones because they're easy. Where do you get the vertical asymptote from? Bless you. Where do you see? Yeah, Mintu. OK, we look at the denominator, right? Vertical asymptotes are about the domain, right? Um, well, they're the flip side of the domain, right? They're the restrictions. And restrictions come from the denominator. If you make the denominator equal to 0, you will find the equations of all the vertical asymptotes that you have, no matter how many there are. So if what we had down here was like x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3, and so on, right? If you let that denominator equal 0, and you solve it, you'll get x equals minus 1, and x equals minus 2, and x equals minus 3, however many you have. And those will be all your vertical asymptotes. In this case, I just have the 1. Right? So let's draw them in. Don't forget, um, it's important to put the equation on of all your asymptotes. As you will see, you get quite a few flying around eventually. We've done our vertical one. Now, horizontal and oblique asymptotes. Just 
hands up quickly. Who's met horizontal oblique asymptotes before? Okay, excellent. So about half of you, all right. So let's do it this way. Vertical asymptotes are about where your graph does and doesn't exist. More so doesn't, okay? Horizontal and oblique asymptotes are about something quite different. They're about how the graph is behaving at its extremities. That's a really important word. How the graph is behaving at its extremities, okay? In other words, as, and I'm going to introduce a bit of notation here that's very, very common sense, but it will be important for us later. As x approaches, that's what that arrow means, as x approaches positive and negative infinity, what is the whole function doing? Okay, as x approaches positive or negative infinity, what is the whole function doing? Okay, now before I get to this one, right, let's just think about a simple example. The one that I put up before. If I said, come back to this guy because you're so familiar with him, right? As x approaches infinity for this, this graph here, okay, what's happening to y? What's happening to y? What value is it going toward? Yeah, it's going towards zero, right? Now, not only is it going towards zero, but I'm going to add in a little bit of extra notation here, okay, in a second. It's approaching zero, but it's approaching it from a particular direction, right? Which way is it coming from? Is it coming from the top or coming from the bottom? It's coming from, as I go towards positive infinity, right? I'm coming from the top. Like, you have the picture in your head, don't you? There it is, right? Look, over here, that's, that's positive infinity coming over this side, right? And I'm getting closer and closer, but I'm coming from the top. It has to, because I've got a positive number on the numerator and a positive, very, very positive number on the denominator. You take the ratio, you get a positive, okay? So the way that we indicate this is in notation, right? Is it's not just approaching zero, it is. But it's approaching zero from above. That's a bit of a weird form of notation. You're like, zero positive? Like, zero doesn't have a sign, that's true. What this means is, where are you coming from to get to zero? Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Means you had a question? Okay, sure. So now, that's just one of the extremities. That's just one of the extremities, right? There's another one, which happens at the opposite end of the spectrum, okay? And what's happening is, as you put very, very large negative numbers in, oop, wrong way, large negative numbers in, okay? Y is still approaching zero, but it's approaching from below zero, right? It's gonna be minus 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.01 and so on. So it's zero with a minus sign. Okay. So here are two little bits of weird notation which I, you don't need for this coming assessment, but it's just the most efficient way to talk about what's happening here. Okay. So you can work out what's happening to um, a graph asymptotically as extremities by testing out values. Like you can put in x equals 100 and 1,000 and a million and so on and see what happens to your graph. Okay. So now that we understand basically what these are about, how do you work out whether it's horizontal or oblique? How, for instance, can I see, just by looking at it doing no computation, I see that there's an oblique asymptote for this graph. What kinds of features are we looking for? Yeah. What's the difference between an oblique and horizontal? Yeah, sure. So we know what horizontal is, right? Yeah. Horizontal, just going, approaching a, a number, a constant, just like this. It doesn't have to be zero, by the way. It could be approaching one or three or minus 50, okay, so long as it's a number. An oblique asymptote is off at an angle. Right? So it's not just a constant, it's going to be, and you'll see in a second, it's going to be approaching a line that's increasing or decreasing rather than just horizontal. Okay? So the way I think about it is not horizontal.